I was sitting there talking to my daughters, Joey, and they were asking me why I don't have red receipts in my texts. I'm sorry. Do you know what a re- red receipt is? Mine are usually blue. Like whenever I'm, I'm texting somebody else, comes up blue. Is that no? I don't know. No red, like R E A D. Oh, like a read receipt or read red yeah. read. Either okay. Way. Do you yeah, have I, read receipts? I don't believe so. No. So this is like a thing for kids. Like this is a thing that they all have the read receipts on, and so. My daughter is saying, like, well, why didn't you have it? And like she's like she was flipping through some text messages I had and she found like somebody. And she goes, oh, look, so this person has read receipts and you can actually swipe to the left. Did you know you can swipe to the left in a text exchange and it will show you the time? Yes, I did know that. I did know that. Well, so then if they have read receipts on, you can actually see when you sent it to them and when they read it and then when they responded to it. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the thing about that. She, she's like, and you know, I was, I was talking to so and so, and they left me on red for you know like an hour before they responded. And she's like, "But Dad, why don't you ever have on your read receipts?" And I was like, "I don't know, but it sounds like the read receipts. I would have to have it on for someone else to see it, or they would have theirs on for me to see." And she said, "Yeah." I was like, "But it." seems like you guys, every time, you know, you have that on and you don't respond, then you guys start talking trash about each other. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't want people talking trash about me. I don't, you know, like I, I'm naturally <laughs> going to be bad at following through. So I don't want them to know when I read it and when I didn't. Exactly. I definitely don't want Russ knowing when I read his text and, and responded. <laughs> so if you're as confused about read or read receipts as I am, I, I want to bring you into another conversation that we had today which is oftentimes misunderstood, which is the concept of infinite banking. Joe, we talk about it a lot. I think we think about it in a second nature. Right. But but today's topic for the person who might be listening to our show for the first or second time, who've never heard us talk about what is infinite banking. And today's podcast even takes it to the second step is why is this important in my financial freedom journey? What do you think is some of the most important things they're going to take away? Well, I, I think the big thing is is to to question what you've always done with your own finances. Like to it's always it's healthy to challenge that and to compare it to say which one of these things, the thing that I know, the thing that everybody around me is doing, how many of those people are getting to financial freedom in the way that I would say is financial freedom? And Am I on the right path or not? Like this to me is an opportunity to challenge that. And we actually bring up a lot of the questions. Russ, you did a great job of challenging each of us uh, on the call and saying, well, wait a minute. What if? What about this? What about that? The, the challenges that people have naturally, you bring up so that they can be realistic about, well, that's great for you to say that this is excellent, but what about what about this? I think one of the things that oftentimes the critics of this concept get hung up on, and we have many videos on our YouTube page about infinite banking, showing the opportunity cost. And, you know, the the easy ones are, you know, well, isn't life insurance expensive? Don't I have to put money in life insurance policy in order to do this infinite banking concept? Wouldn't it be better if I did something else? That don't the insurance company charge me a greater interest rate than it than it makes some of the real technical things. And at the end, if you hang around to the end, I address some of that. I really feel like we tried to be high level and talk about some of the just big picture items, which is important, right? Like without the future, without knowing where you're going, it doesn't matter the steps, right? Like we have to vi- visualize where we're heading and then plot our steps toward it. And I think too oftentimes with things like this, people get really nitty gritty and start getting down into the precise measurements of things and they miss the whole point. But at the end, we talk about that. We talk about how does this get me to financial freedom faster than the alternatives? 
And even in our inner circle, that was a big conversation. And if this is your first time to the show, let, let's call you to a 15 minute call where you can get on with one of these coaches that were on the podcast today. You can go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash free call. And we want to let you challenge us, ask questions about how this may or may not apply to your situation. We don't feel like it's a silver bullet, but we have seen so many times how it has been the thing that accelerated someone's path. I know for you and I, Joey, we probably wouldn't be on this call today had we not figured this out and created a system that allowed us to then expand not only our business, but more importantly, our own passive income approaches personally. Yeah, no, I I shared late in this episode how I had some light bulb moments that the things I was doing by separating cash in all these different places that everybody around me told me was good for me. It was a good thing for me to be doing. I felt like I was being responsible. Were actually sending me further backward away from what I would have said I wanted. And if that's the only reason you listen to today's episode, I want to call you to this because you owe it to yourself to say, am I on the right track or not? And can I get to financial freedom faster another way and be courageous enough to try to go down that path that so many, so few people actually do. So that's what I would leave you with. All right, let's, let's jump into this thing. We say this every single week. Let's belly up. <laughs> Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to financial freedom. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Glad to have you in the room. I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because bad internet guy, lack of follow through guy didn't sound as cool to me. Well, but that's enough about me. Let's get to the rest of this group. I got to introduce my co-host, my partner, the Italian stallion. He's got the license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joey Murray. Stallion. Good yes. afternoon. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for having me. Joey, how can someone take today's topic and get closer to financial freedom? Well, I I mean, I don't know if that's really the question that we're talking about, um, but I would say that at the very baseline, this is what Wealth Without Wall Street is all about. It's about taking control of the cash flow in your life to optimize it around your journey to financial freedom. If the things that you do with cash do not get you closer to financial freedom, you should stop doing them. If the things that you're doing with cash aren't getting you closer to financial freedom, you should stop doing them. Yes. I mean, that could be a lot of things, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, it's all encompassing, right? But at the very (laughs) beginning of it is why do we do infinite banking? What is infinite banking? It's to be the most efficient with our cash and to build a legacy around that subsequently, but all in the vein of financial freedom. Okay. Getting you there as that, fast as possible. That that was clear as mud, but thankfully I got more people to answer the question. It's not just you and me sitting around this round table. By the way, really quickly, every single time that we come into this round table, right before all the sound music, Joey, we make a comment. And we've had a lot of people ask us, what does that mean? What does what does belly up mean? Well, we're we're bellying up to the table, to the round table. <laughs> That's just a redneck way of saying, let's get face to face, belly to belly, right? We're just bellying up to the table. I, I didn't know That's if, right. if you've ever wondered why we say that as we come into this show. I just want to make sure. All right. So to my left, I got Mr. Incredible, 
his superpower is speed of financial freedom. And the real beauty of that speed is that it's contagious. My man, J.D. Hill, say hello to your fans, J.D. Hey, fans. Hey, fans. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. Yes. Uh, Welcome to 2022. Uh, I am excited to be here, excited to start this uh, uh, new year off with a bang with this awesome topic. Uh, I know as we were prepping for it yesterday, uh, Russ, without you, so you couldn't derail us. Uh, We had some really, really good... (laughs) <laughs> we had some really, really good discussion, and uh, I'm excited to really get into this. This is going to be great. You guys just wanted my derailing to be fresh because I'm going to be derailing yes. this whole podcast. No matter what. That's that's right. <laughs> well, but at least you guys got your thoughts out. You could like build up your your debate, your facts to combat my my challenges. Is that what you're thinking? Well, I'm thinking that likely what we put down on paper, you'll probably derail us entirely. We won't even go, we won't even go over them. We'll probably just talk about something entirely different. And so I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, let's get to our detective in the room. The Ben, I like to call the true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day. No problem too difficult to solve. And if I had only known you earlier, bro, I'd be so much richer. Mr. Ernie Brown. Nice to see you, Ernie. Thank you, Russ. And nice to see you. So happy to be here. I can tell one of JD's resolutions is to tell the truth, nothing but the truth and the whole truth. <laughs> So help me God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Raising well, his hand. I mean, man, you sound like me over there. <laughs> I, well, I wanted to leave you speechless. You know what I mean? I'll tell you another uh, uh, resolution this year is I'm going to start rocking the cardigan. Okay. I'm going to bring it back because the cardigan is so clutch. I prefer the pullover, but uh, I'll go with it. I understand. See, Russ has it too. Look at him. Put it on, Russ. Thank you. Thank you, you Mr. Rogers. You just want a Rogers. cardigan because you Come don't on. have one of these vests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I am so... That's that's great. Great color, y'all are, too. That's y'all nice. are opposite. Y'all are like, I need my arms to be warm. I don't want my chest to be... I want it to be cold. And I'm like, man, keep my core tight. Keep my arms free. Mm. Joey has a tough time keeping his core tight. Come on. <laughs> that belly is right. down. Belly up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, say so hello to, up to this conversation, Alexandria. <laughs> all right, let's 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 get on to the topic. So the topic today is what is infinite banking and why is it important in my financial freedom journey? Jump into that, Ern. What is infinite banking? I said we start there. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. it, is, it is two questions. It's two questions about one idea. What is infinite banking? I would say two things. Number one, it is probably the most important thing an entrepreneur can do to sustain their success and for the person beginning, accelerate their success. The second thing is infinite banking. Imagine, Imagine in your family between grandparents, your parents, yourself, your children, grandchildren, there is this pool of capital that anything anybody in the family was doing related to money, whether that be in uh, purchasing birth announcements, retirement party planning, committees, purchasing vehicles for your 16 year old, purchasing educations for your children, purchasing automobiles, purchasing uh, businesses, real estate, whatever it is, anytime any of those needs happen, any of those family members were able to go to that pool of cash and use it. And then within the family governance to say, if you use it, you must return it. If you had a family bank with that pool of capital where you could do everything that you needed, in essence, that is the end of infinite banking. Well, I mean, just yesterday we were sitting in our passive income mastermind monthly meeting And we had an estate planning attorney teaching us on Nevada Asset Trust. And he was talking about this. He was talking about that very thing, about how he had helped set up for, you know, the the patriarch of a family that now 20, 30 years later, he's watching after that person has passed, he's watching the family use those funds in order to carry out the mission. And and one of the missions was charitable. He said, this group gives away $10 million a year. Wow. 
and, and the family gets to participate in it because one of the family's core values was generosity. And I just, I love that what you're saying there, Ernie, is that when you build something like this, and I think, you know, high, high level for, if you're coming to this, you, you don't know what infinite banking is. You hear Ernie talking about this pool of money that you had access. We're going to kind of get down into the, the technical nitty gritty in a second, I would guess. But just really quickly, big picture, I think you're setting the vision for why is this important. I mean, here's a, another thing I think why this is important, just taking it one layer deeper, is we were on a call this morning, uh, J.D. and Joey and I, and we were talking about the the what is the thing that's greater than us, like, right? It is that family. It's, it's how do we distribute? How do we become a great ancestor, I think was... Uh, was thrown out there by the other guy on, on our call. And I said, you know, the reason why we don't understand who our great, great grandfather or great, great grandmother is, is because we, we have no real reason to know who they are, right? Mm. Unless you're just a nerd and, and you like digging up your, your family's tree, your DNA, like that's your thing. And, and I have some family members and, that have done that and they they share cool stories. My last name is Morgan. Do you know I'm actually related to Captain Morgan, the original Captain Morgan? Are you really? Yeah, Henry Morgan. Yeah. He was a a, a privateer in the, in the English army and they called him a captain, they called him a pirate just because I mean, he he was um uh, he he was you know stealing gold off the Spanish and French ships, but I mean, it was just part of the process back then, you know? So, I mean, wow. it's just random facts here, but just so, you know, like there's, a, there's one of those derail moments, Russ. Thank <laughs> you for uh, yeah. being true. Well, well, here, here, here's the thing though, outside of something cool like that, that your family member is now, you know, a pirate, a pirate that <laughs> lots of people love, love his spice rum. Right. Mm. Other than that, what else would make you know who they are? Well, here's one idea, Ern, is if you got a check from that person every single month, I think you would remember that name. I think you'd probably even do a little research to figure out who they were. And if it kept coming every month of your life, I promise you, you would probably be able to tell us and you'd probably give a toast to him um, at, at major events with your family. And if we could set up a system that could do that, not only for our current lives, but for the future, I think that's pretty cool. So that's a big high level thing. Well, but, and let me let me throw this in there. You you set a beautiful picture, Earn, of like the freedom behind a family not ever having to go to an outside bank. Like that's the first thing I thought of. But what else it would that do for you or your family to have a system like that? Like JD, what's the first thing that comes to your mind that you say? Wow, if that could be the end of what infinite banking is, what would that do for me? I mean, immediately what comes to mind is legacy. Um, right? Which I mean, it's um legacy is the first thing that comes to mind, uh, candidly, is is um when you start thinking about like the power of what that is, how you start collectively pooling assets together for the benefit of the family. Um, your mind it's a it's a mind shift, uh, uh it's a paradigm shift. And you start to look at resource and money totally differently. And I think, I think from a stewardship standpoint, it changes how you are as a steward of those dollars. No uh, doubt. And, and so that's, that's what, that's what immediately comes to mind for me. Aaron, what about you? What you, you hear that you see that vision, obviously you're the one that painted it for us. What is that family experiencing as a result of that being in place? Well, I think it's creativity. It's, mm -hmm. it's freedom breeding creativity. It's, it's like someplace warm where the beer flows like wine <laughs> and the women flock instinctively like the salmon of Capistrano, something like that. <laughs> I'll say it this way. I, I've met with it. There's a, there's a couple of people that stick out that, I, that I've met with that have implemented infinite banking, gotten on that process. And for the first time are getting really excited, not just I'm excited about doing this, but really excited about building passive income. And I think that's how, because they're getting capital in control. They're starting not just to get the ideas and the excitement, but starting to get themselves in a position where they could actually do something about it because they've got the resources available to them. 
All right, let's, so let's, I want to I want to address the analytical listeningness, right? Because right now, everybody that's a lot like Joey and I and are are super excited. Like it's like big picture, seeing the vision. Yes, get give me more, right? But the everybody who's more analytical, more technical in nature, more skeptical, right? Who who loves critical questions says. You guys have given me nothing so far. You said, what is infinite banking? And all I've heard is a bunch of legacy, um, pool of cash, Russ telling some random story about pirates and Captain Morgan. Half of it probably is inaccurate because he forgets details. So how do I, what is this thing? What specifically is infinite banking, Joey? Well, what I would say is you have to break it down to the very first step. And the very first step of creating a bank is to mimic what banks do. And it starts with where do they put their own capital? So if I'm going to build a bank, I want to build it the same way Bank of America does, the same way Wells Fargo does. And I'm going to pool my capital in the most efficient place. It just so happens that these banking institutions, by the way, we learned this through Nelson Nash's book, Become Your Own Banker. If you don't have that, you need to go get it. Hold, hold, hold on, R really quickly. I, I think it's like just real basic. What is infinite banking? First, what is infinite? Never Forever. ending, constantly growing creativity. You, you can't put a name on it, right? You can't, right. you can't, you can't sum it up. Infinite is. It's not finite. Exactly. Right. Well, but the, the thing about this, I, I think infinite means there's no idea that we will share today that will put it in a box. The second part of that is banking. Now, yes. we all know in some context what banking is. We all have a bank account. We Most of us have gone to a bank and taken loans, right? Or, or when you started to go down the road of, Okay, but what I'm looking at is more basic is this is about banks. That's half true, but not fully true. Now, <laughs> express your idea. I just want to put that, frame it in, in, in those two lines. Well, the, the thing I was getting at is, is if you want the, inst the final institution that Ernie so eloquently kind of put out there is the freedom that a, owning and, and operating a family bank would create, you have to act like a bank. And, and so that way I'm going to put my money where they put their money. And you can go check this out on any FDIC.gov, look up your own bank and see what they put into cash value life insurance. They put billions of dollars into cash value life insurance. Why? It's because it gives them all of the benefits, the safety and the freedom to use it as they want but it gives them the ability for that money to continue to grow and to do multiple jobs at one time. So I'm, I'm holding to the fact that that's where I'm going to park my dollars to be as efficient as possible before I, I, I put it to work. I'm pushing back on it. I'm listening to this for the first time. I don't know what the crap you're talking about. And all of a sudden you throw in cash value life insurance. I, that's disconnected for me. I don't understand why we're talking about banking. And now you're talking about cash value life insurance. JD. Please, I'm giving Joey a phone, a friend. Please a help yeah. connect the dots. So, so Russ, um, when you deposit money in the bank, does the bank give you interest on that money? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Likely not, right? They're not going to give you interest on that money. So the only way for you to make that money work for you is you have to do what with that cash? I, I, I have to put it somewhere to, that would create a, 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 um, some sort of income. That's right. So cash is very expensive, right? Fundamentally, we agree that cash is very expensive. And the only way for me to earn some sort of a rate of return on that money is for me to take it out of the bank and put it into somewhere else to earn some sort of an interest rate or rate of return, right? Okay. All right. Okay. What infinite banking allows us to do is to essentially remove the bank and have my money now growing uninterrupted forever while I'm also investing it in other assets. This podcast is amazing. Almost too amazing, Russ. There's too many ideas and I don't know where to get started creating passive income.
Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Get started today. Okay, so as you're explaining this, I'm going to tie, again, I'm just trying to listen from someone who's never heard this as ears. Yeah. I think we all relate to, we have money coming into a checking account and you just told me cash is dumb. Cash is expensive. Yes. And, and we, we're going to spend a decent amount of that cash, but with what's left over, I got to do something with it. And now you're introducing something new there. That's right. Yeah, because because at the end of the day, people have two choices. I either I either save the money in a bank or I invest the money, right? After I consume it, most people are going to invest because they want to get a rate of return, right? And and what they give up with that though is they give up generally liquidity and safety. So the reason why we would put money in the bank is because we get liquidity and safety, but what we give up is rate of return. So 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 the 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 friction there is where I want safety and liquidity. I don't get rate of return and where I want rate of return, I don't get safety and liquidity. So people have money split up or separated in between these two different places. They'll put a little bit of their money in the bank because they know it makes sense to have an emergency fund and have access to cash. And they put the rest of their dollars into an investment, right? That's the normal flow of capital, generally speaking, for most Americans. Is that fair? Sure. Yep. So when you insert infinite banking, infinite banking is now the place where I'm going to store my capital first before I go and make that now investment. Because now with infinite banking, right, using a specially designed life insurance policy, because the concept of infinite banking is, 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 is not necessarily that you have to use life insurance in general. You can use a number of different accounts. It just happens to be the best one uh, or a number of different strategies. But it's, it's, it's me being able to make a deposit somewhere, get now safety, control, liquidity, rate of return, all these other advantages and benefits. And now I can go and invest it somewhere. But, but the choice that I make with doing that is, is now I, can, I don't have to be in a hurry to go make that investment because my cash is, is burning a hole in my pocket. All right. So there's, there's two separate pieces you're explaining there. One piece is a product. One piece is a process of how we're doing something, right? It, there's, there's always processes that can make our life simpler. There's processes that can make our uh, finances more efficient, right? right. And I, I think that the infinite banking concept is helping us understand how, one, is showing us the inefficiency of keeping money in cash, right? And then it's answering the second part, which is how do I make it more efficient? And there has to be a tool to start that process. Earn is putting money in life insurance the end. Or is it just the beginning? It is absolutely just the beginning. It That's is right. just the beginning, just like when your paycheck comes in and it goes into your checking account. That is just the beginning of the story of that paycheck. Well, it, let's just pretend I'm a, a real estate investor. Apply this concept to me. <clears throat> well, I, was, I met with a real estate investor right before this conversation. And we were talking about how he did $1.5 million of his capital uh, uh, forgive me, 1.5 million of acquisitions in real estate last year. And we talked about, had he known about infinite banking several years ago, the, the capital he put down for the financing on that real estate, he would have been able to put into one of those specially designed insurance policies or one of those dividend paying insurance policies. We've said both of those. Uh, cash value, who have been able to put those into an insurance policy and taken that capital vi via loan from the insurance company and put the loan money, the insurance company's capital into the real estate deal. And, he would have had his would dollars have in the insurance company and the insurance company's dollars in the real estate. So he would have two things going on at once. Yeah. Explain to me, Joey, why that's better. Like what's the, so what to what Ernie just said there? How does that make my situation better? Well, the alternative, what's the alternative? It's always compared to what, right? So either I can have the capital in the insurance company in that policy growing and subsequently use someone else's dollar, which is by the way, is what banks do. 
They use your money to create their own investment income. And so you can either do that with the insurance policy, put your money in and use the insurance company's money to invest. So you get both growth at the same time, or you can use cash. And what you have to do is you put that money from your cash account into the investment and you've subsequently given up any gains that that cash account would have, would have produced. So either you get one or you get two, which one is better for you? I like two. <laughs> what we're talking about is the benefit of the tool. That's what life insurance gives you. And right. why it's, it's the such a crucial, it is such a crucial part. What JD said, it's the best tool for infinite banking. That's the tool. We're talking about the other part, which is the behavior of how cash flows. Because from somewhere, you have to make an investment. And then the cash flow that the investment make has to come back somewhere. This seems super complicated though. Like it, to me, again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. That's my, my best job um, that I can do for you is, is be the advocate for the person on the other end of this podcast, listening and saying they can't ask the questions that I'm trying to ask is this seems complicated, JD. Like, wouldn't it just be simpler if I just put cash in my checking account and sure, I don't get the interest that Joey and Ernie just explained to me that I would have got here, but I don't have to deal with loans and cash value life insurance and blah, 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 all the junk that comes with that. And I could just go do my deals. I could just go buy the stuff that I'm going to normally buy and invest in. Why would, why would that not be better than this? I mean, I get like, you probably can prove it on paper how I get more interest. But the complication, my life is busy. I've got four kids. I've got businesses to, to manage. Managing one more thing in my day is not really high on my party list. Yeah, mine either <laughs> uh, at all. Um, let me ask this because I, 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 I don't want to sh- you know, skirt your question, but you're, you're asking a lot of really, really awesome questions from a perspective of a skeptic, which I love. Um, and we're having to do this audibly without even being able to draw or, or use visuals and those types of things, which is, which is such a wonderful way to teach whenever you can visually demonstrate something. So I want to, I want to put this back on you and ask you the same question you just asked me, what would your response be? As the consumer or as the person that knows how it works? As the person who knows how it works, right? If you were going to con- like explain to a consumer, like, why would they want to do this? It seems complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces, what it sounds like. So why would you do it, Russ? Did you guys hear what JD just did there? Like, he totally just said, okay, I'm going to play into Russ's ego. He likes to talk, and then I'm going to kind of get off the hook without coming across right or wrong on this thing. He's so here's master. how I'd say. So one, I would, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to first point out something you mentioned. We are getting ready shortly to go into our inner circle, which is the group that is focused on how to get the financial freedom as fast as possible, right? And there's people listening to this right now live that we will do a live Q&A with to go deeper and to be able to draw and to share all of those things. That's one of many benefits as being a member inside the inner circle. So if you are not a member of our inner circle, let's call you to action here. Let's, let's use 2022 to help you get closer. We will give you access to a seven day free trial. You go to wealthwildwallstreet.com forward slash inner circle. You can start participating in some of these discussions get access to these questions. So now to answer your question, how would I say it? Well, here's what one thing. I, my job is to look at smart people, hire smart people, and utilize their advice, right? I've, I've done that fairly well. That's the reason why I know all of you guys. Like, I'm always trying to surround myself with smarter people. To Joey's point earlier, this is what I would know. How many Mensa Award winners exist on the investment boards of these uh, major banking institutions, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, Manhattan, it, the fair amount of Ivy League degrees, right? These are, these are not scrubs. These are not scrubs. People yeah. who have done their homework and analyzed this at nth degree. So here's what I got to say is that, one, I grew up with a public education, um, did not uh, ex- exceed in that because there was nothing motivating me to do it, right? It took me a lot to learn how money works and it was long after I left my you know, colleges before I started figuring this out, I had to learn. But then when I, I started looking around, I started to evaluate what successful people are doing. It didn't take very long when I was 
you know, helping manage money and looking at institutional money managers and seeing what they're doing with money to realize that big money is putting money in life insurance. So to answer the question, it might take a little more time. I don't know. Right. I mean, you know, for the last 12 years, I've been doing it and I, I guess I'm doing it okay. Cause I don't even know it's happening. It's, it's so integrated in my life. I don't see it as a, another item on my to-do list, but what made me do it on the front end was the fact that I realized that if I didn't do it, I was saying that those people are stupid. And I knew that that wasn't the case. I knew that they were smart. I knew that they were, you know, dealing with a lot more zeros behind their numbers than mine. And I thought if they're willing to do it, there must be a big payoff. And I think here's the thing that I, I've been able to experience personally. And I think you've experienced this too, JD, is what has opened up for me through this process, which is the second part of the question. The first part of the question for us is what is infinite banking? The second part was why is this important toward my financial freedom journey was opened up for me because of uh, implementing this is that I have more access to cash than I ever would have. Mm. And that is what I have practically seen. I've practically seen so many statements over the years where people didn't have access to money. And so when, when people say, oh, well, how in the world are you guys investing in syndications, both multifamily, ATM funds, you guys are starting short-term rental business, land flipping businesses, e-commerce business. How in the world are you guys doing all of that? Well, I can tell you because we have access to money and our brains are constantly being challenged of what do we do with that money? And the people that I meet that come into this and they don't have, act, they're not doing any of that stuff. One of the number one reasons that keep people from being financially free, Joey, is what? Lack of access to cash. So here's the thing, I, I, and I, I think we all can prove this mathematically that putting money in our these insurance contracts and earning a higher rate than zero puts us at an advantage. But let's just say that was a lie. Let, let, for the skeptic out there, it's like, it's insurance, it's bull crap, I don't believe you. Okay, let, let's let them win that argument. Let's just say I have less money because I put it in an insurance policy over time. If I have access to cash though, I can do deals. How many deals, Joey, at 40 and 50 and 60% have, have you and I done over the last five years because of this? Oh, too many. How many deals does the average person on the street do at 40 and 50 and 60%? Zero. And let me tell you why, Russ. This is, this is a, a light bulb moment for me. When I, before I understood about infinite banking, I was following all of the things that you know the world is telling you to do with it. Put some money over here into this 401k because you don't want to lose this match. It has this tax benefit, right? So this is why I put money over here. Oh, and then if you have others, you need to put it over here in this a Roth IRA because now you you want the other tax benefits here and you can you can do so and so forth with this money. And then you want to put some money over here in the savings and you want to put somebody, you start looking at all the money. You, you said infinite banking might be more time consuming. Guess what? Having all your money in all these different places, are you even efficient in any one of those places? You don't even know. Let's be honest. I looked up at a, at a Roth IRA statement that I started when we first got married and had been putting money in for like six years. And this was like 2010, I pulled up the statement. I had put more money in, I, I did all the math, added up all of the con contributions I had put into it. I had put more money in than what was on the statement. And I was like, this is six years of my life that I did not was not paying attention and I have less money. I would have done better to put it in my sock drawer this whole time. Well, well, right? Did you even have it invested though? No, I'm kidding. Exactly. Who <laughs> knows? Maybe I did. But, but, but to, the, to the my point, point to that, even, even with that, right, Joey, just even with that, had you had it in your sock drawer, you would have thought, man, I probably need to be looking around and seeing if there's an opportunity around. I, I should yes. try to see if I could do something with this. When you put it in the Roth IRA, not only did it not do what you hoped it would do, how much engagement of your mind and the ability for you to think about opportunities did it create? No, zero. And that is the unseen. That's the infinite 
part of infinite banking, in my opinion, is the imagination. And I remember Nelson saying this in those conferences we would attend when he would be at lunch with us or whatever it was. He would say, this is um, this is a how did exercise. he say this? an exercise in imagination. That was the one of the Reason, first words he said. Logic and prophecy. Yeah. OK, you said it perfectly. I just remember the word imagination. And I remember at the time being like, I don't understand. But now when you pull all of your capital into one location, i.e. the number of policies that we have now versus where it was, you know, 12 years ago, you have to be creative to say, what can I do with this? Where can I, to your point, Russ, I need to get this money at work. And it's amazing now to see the results and the freedom that all that has created. That is the end of how infinite banking gets you to financial freedom as soon as possible, because you now have pooled money in one place and you have to be empowered to get there. That's why we educate you every week on the show and in our inner circle that Russ has already mentioned, because we want you to get the same education that we've gone through and get to financial freedom. Okay, Ernie, I'm going to come to you because we've got to wrap this up. We got to get to the inner circle and answer all those questions that are coming. I want you to focus this last take on why is this important in my financial freedom journey? It's number one, it's not complicated. It's actually really simple when you think about where you keep cash. It creates some natural governance. It, it creates the incentives for you to not steal from yourself. If you're going to play the role of the banker in your business, then you're going to steward that capital that much harder. It's, it's got all sorts of benefits. We didn't even talk about the fact that if you did create a massive pool of capital, do you think that there would be other people interested in getting that? The first labor, labor saving device, theft, <laughs> stealing. You think if you got that, people would want to come and get it? This, is, this helps protect. So it's got all this simplicity, all this natural governance. It, it opens your mind to see things that were underneath your nose the entire time and gives you the resources to act on them. I mean, this, it's all the things that we've already talked about. It's all the, it's all the unseen benefits that, that you don't realize until you are doing it. I tell all the people, I, I tell people all the time that are starting this, that a lot of this that we're talking about is all conceptual. You're going to need to get some experience on this. And, and these things will bear out to be true. And we've seen that in Nelson Nash's life and in his family. We're seeing it in our lives. And now we're seeing, by the way, I think we're in our fifth year of this podcast. I mean, props to you guys. How many of our, of our people have come back and shared their stories of what they've been able to create? So it's bearing out in their lives. Joey. Fo focus on why is this important in my financial freedom journey as you have your last take. I, I cannot give enough credence to the fact of the creativity it creates, um, the, the freedom that ha has shifted when you start saying, instead of thinking about putting money away into something that you could one day touch versus I touch it today, infinite banking gives me access to capital and, and it has just catapulted my brain to think passive income today. Why would I put this off? Why would I put off being able to be present with my family at each of these major milestones that they're going through, right? This is the time that I don't want to give up and I can't give up. And so, man, if, if I didn't have infinite banking, it would not even be a choice. It wouldn't be an option. And uh, so anyways, getting to financial freedom as fast as possible has all surrounded access to cash, which has created, um, again, numerous opportunities for passive income and freedom. JD, what's your last take as it relates to why is this important to my financial freedom journey? Um, I'll speak just from personal experience. Uh, this has been, without a doubt, what has given me a massive level of focus and helped me to connect the dots between where I was, right? In terms of not having any passive income to, to where I want to be and, and now having 
other forms and streams of passive income. Uh, so this has been an absolute catalyst uh, for me personally. Um, and, and so I, I just, it, it's been foundational. Like I, it, without um, having IBC, what I have still created passive income and done the things that I've done. Absolutely. Um, if, uh, if, yeah, but I wouldn't have done it as fast. Right? It would have taken me a lot longer because I wouldn't have had access it, it, to the capital. When, when, when did you start really focusing on creating passive income? <laughs> Man, candidly, uh, really focusing on it was whenever I actually joined Wealth Without Wall Street. Like being so, so I'm, I'm, I'm challenging. This is what my gift is. Um, if Joey, you and I were not focused on building passive income, would there be a wealth without Wall Street? Yeah, there would be. We could have, we would have just started with infinite banking because it was the foundation. It was before we knew that passive income was even important. Would, would we have hired and needed? other people to help us and been introduced to JD had we not been focused on passive income? No. Passive yeah, income we, is we were, what created we the opportunity guys. for us to, to try to find other amazing people out there in the world to help us to, I, I think uh, to help you to be, <laughs> to be frank, like Joey and I really stink <laughs> at details and are not great technically with some of this stuff and Ernie, Mark and JD, you guys by far get this stuff way better than we do and communicate it way better than we do. So I I'm challenging you, JD, that you wouldn't have gotten to passive income because we wouldn't have been talking about these things had it not been because of IBC. IBC was what led us to passive income and then we started talking about it and we're sharing it with everybody else. And, and obviously it's hard not to get excited about it. I mean, our, one of our new team members said yesterday in our, in our uh, company chat, after being on a couple of calls, like, how do you guys not want to do everything? This is so exciting. And, and well, why, are, why is she so excited? Cause she's hearing ideas she never even thought about before. And those ideas are only, given fruit because we have access to dollars to make it happen. That's why this is so important to our financial freedom journey is it actually jumpstarts it. It creates it. It pours gasoline on the fire so that I get there faster. It, I can use it, many more metaphors and analogies, but that is so important for us it, to understand. And that I'll tell this you, is, go ahead. To, to add to that point, I would not be saving the amount of money that I'm saving now if it wasn't for IBC. Like I just, I just wouldn't like, I, I wouldn't be down. saving the amount of capital that I'm saving now. If it wasn't for IBC, I'm a far better saver and a far better steward because of IBC. It, it no forces doubt. you to there. There's just, as you said earlier, Ern, there's this governance that, that creates opportunity. I know Mark has a saying that says, you know, that nobody ever has said, I wish I would have saved less money. <laughs> you know, I sure wish I just wouldn't have saved that money. Right. Like we're all excited about that opportunity, but this provides the the means that gets us to closer the end because Wealth Wall Street provides and helps us break free of that mindset, the bondage that we have to keep trading time for money. And what unlocks that door is what Joey said earlier is access to cash. That's why today's topic is so vital. It's why we want to call you into the inner circle. We want to call you into the community. We want to, if, if you just need 15 minutes of one of these guys' time, let's give you the opportunity to do that. Go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash free call and, and ask specific questions. Ernie, JD, Mark, any of our coaches are glad to talk to you about that, but we got to go. It was long. It was good. Gentlemen, thank you. As always, thank you for listening to this. If you haven't already um, reviewed the show, please do hit the hit the subscribe button. Get notified every single week as we drop two of these podcasts into your favorite podcast app. We'll see you on the next episode. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand 
so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.